I'm going to show you how to fit Philips infiltration model to infiltration data. Infiltration data is usually obtained by double ring infiltrometers or single ring infiltrometers. The theory behind the use of this is pretty simple. You just fill those cylinders here with water, either both of them or if you're using a single ring infiltrometer, just one of them. And you, you measure the time it takes for the, the water to level to to other level to decrease a certain amount here. So this is the amount of water that infiltrates at each time step. And you see if you sum all of them, you have a cumulative infiltration as a function of time for your whole experiment. The Phillips infiltration models, you have the infiltration rate, which is the cumulative infiltration over time or the rate of infiltration over time. So the infiltration rate has a length of uh, has the dimension of length over time, and the infiltration, the cumulative information infiltration, has the unit of length. This infiltration rate, the lowercase i here, is just the first derivative of the the cumulative infiltration. So both are function of time. In the case of the cumulative infiltration, is a fun direct function of the square root of time plus a time and the cumulative the infiltration rate is a function of s over 2 times 1 over the square root, root of time plus a so you can go from one for another there by differentiation or integration so the the infiltration rate is the first derivative of the cumulative infiltration function and on the other hand the, the cumulative infiltration is the integral of the infiltration rate. The easiest way to fit these models here using just Excel, remember you can fit these functions using nonlinear regression. It's, it's sort of straightforward because those are, are well behaved functions, but we can linearize the cumulative, the infiltration rate, not the cumulative infiltration and then you can fit it just using Excel. How do we linearize this? Remember, here we have i equals s over 2, 1 over square root of time plus a. If you, if you transform here, say, i equals y, and 1 over square root of t, t, 1 over the square root of t equals x, you have a linear function. The slope of your linear function is s over 2, and the intercept is a. The, S here is the sorptivity, which is a parameter that's very important at early time infiltration. And A is the intercept, is the value of the infiltration rate at very long times, after very long times when the system becomes stable. So this here is usually related to the field saturated hydraulic conductivity or the constant infiltration rate, although it's not exactly the same thing as the saturated hydraulic conductivity. So what we need to do here is first create a transformed variable here, one over square root of time. So this is here is going to be like, it's going to be the root of our, our x function. So equals one over square root of time. If you use an Excel in your, in your native language, you're going to have to use the functions the translated functions. Okay, so one over square root of time. And the infiltration rate can be written as a numerical derivative of the cumulative infiltration over time. So this numerical derivative is just the cumulative infiltration at the second time step minus at the first time step divided by the root time at the second time step divided by the time of the first time step. So this is just a numerical derivative. So now here we have i in centimeters per minute, which is the units we're working, and the 1 over square root of t in the proper units, 1 over square root of time. So now 
going to show you that this relation is linear. I'm just going to put zeros here. It's not correct to put zeros here, but Excel likes it more to do the plots when you put the zeros here. So let's insert the plot here. Now we remove, since we already put the plot here, we remove this zeros. And you can see that now we have a linear function. So the linear function or approximate the linear function, the slope of this function is s over 2 and the intercept of this function is a. So if we add the linear train line here, let's put the equation and values here display equation and display r square. you can see that we can do a pretty decent linear fit of this data. So this here, the y-axis is i, the cumulative the infiltration rate, and this is 1 over square root of time. So we're going to fit this using just Excel. Here you already have the values. 3.05 is s over 2 and 0.78 is a. But let's do it this different so you can use these values to do predictions. So we're going to calculate here s over 2. Let me just put this away here so we have plenty of space to do other plots. So let's calculate s over 2. Let's calculate a and let's calculate the r squared. So s over 2 it's the slope. Again, you probably need to, if you're using in a native language, you need the proper function. So it's the slope of the one over square root of time. So this is our x variable. And our y variable here is the infiltration rate. So the slope here, it's 0.31 s over 2. And our intercept here, Yes. So let me let me just do a little correction here. Equals slope of first you have the y variable. So the y variable here is the i. And the x variable is one over square root of time. So it's three point oh five, and here we have the intercept, which is the a parameter. Again, y is i and 1 over square root of time is uh, x. And we can calculate, before we, we do the r square, we need to, to actually do some predictions here. So now we have time. Let's copy this time here. Let me add a couple of, of, of columns here. So let's now, now do our calculations and our predictions. So t here, let's put t minutes. Let's just copy here. Let's put our i observed centimeters per minute, which is the measured value this here, which is our measured values and let's put i predicted by the model also in centimeters per minute by Philips infiltration model put a little space here a little space here just copy this here just copy the observed data Remember, we don't need this zero here. We're going to take it away in a little bit. And then our predictions will be, let's just get rid of this, will be equal to the intercept here, this value. I'm just going to fix this slope here, or better, the slope times here, uh, time. 
plus a. So I'm using the calculated coefficients to do predictions using the model, okay? So let's drag this here. Let's just do a little correction here. I need to actually use one over square root of time here because we fitted the model to this using this in this way. We could we could transform this here in a different level, but let's just put it in the model. We already have it here, so let's just use it like the model we fit. So now let's just put this bolt here. I'm gonna put zeros here just to do our plot. Now let's plot the two functions. Okay. Let's get rid of the zeros because as I told you before, it's not correct to have these zeros here. So now here is your whole plot. So what you have here is the predicted and observed values. And can he see that the curves are pretty close? And then we can also calculate the square root of those values by using the square root function here. So square root of known. Let's do the square root of the predicted versus the observed. And then you get the R squared. 0.96, which is what we found before. You can do some modifications here, cosmetic, add the labels and added everything else. It's really frustrating to do that in the uh, Excel online, but it's it should be it should work a lot better if you do it on a Excel version installed in there in your computer. But it's not difficult to do here. It's just a pain to do it sometimes.